So people often ask me, are there rattlesnakes in Minnesota? And the answer is a resounding yes. And in this area of southeastern Minnesota, timber rattlesnakes are actually quite common. They didn't used to be, but they are making a comeback. And this area of Minnesota is called the Driftless Zone. And it's called that because for the last two ice ages, the glaciers did not affect this area. And therefore, you've got these beautiful river bluffs along the Mississippi River. And it's on top of these river bluffs that the timber rattlesnake makes its home. So in this this video, I'm not just going to go out and try to find rattlesnakes on top of these bluffs. I'm going to do something that I've always wanted to do. I'm going to take a six and a half foot endoscope and I'm going to explore the rattlesnake dens on top of this bluff and I'm going to answer the question, what's inside a rattlesnake den? I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. You got to watch your footing in here because any one of these ridges in here could have a rattlesnake sitting there sunning itself under all this vegetation and you won't know that it's there until you are right on top of it all right look at this we've come up to this cave in the limestone here i don't think that we are the first humans that have ever been up here but look at this this is just a natural cave in the limestone this is so cool look at that Lots of nooks and crannies. Somebody made a nest in there. Look at this. This is like 20 degrees cooler in here. Man, this is so cool. Okay, I think we'll go this way. All right, guys, look at this. The first timber rattlesnake. He's wedged in that crevice right there. All right, so we've come across our first timber rattlesnake den, and this is what they look like. They're just little cracks in the limestone like that. And there's places to go in down there. There's places to go in over there. So I'm gonna take the endoscope and I'm gonna see who's home in this rattlesnake den. Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit zillarules.com. So the endoscope that I'm using here is kind of multi-directional, but only to the left or to the right. So it's a little bit difficult to maneuver through these really tight crevices. I'm constantly having to twist the cord in order to get it to stand upright. And then once you do that, you don't know if you're moving left or right or up and down. So it's a little difficult, but I got it about a foot in and really didn't see anything at first. And then all of a sudden there she was and she came right up to the camera. And now there's a light on the top of the camera and it emits heat. And so if you look, she really doesn't know what's going on. There is something invading her safe space here and she is on full alert. And so several feet down into the den, no light gets in down here. And so look at her pupils. Usually when you find timber rattlesnakes, they're sitting out in the sunshine and those pupils are just a thin little line. And she simply is not at all sure what to make of whatever this alien thing is that has come into her domain is. But it didn't stop her from being really curious and she comes right back up to the camera. So as I tried to get a better image of this snake, you can see that there's this root that is literally right in my way. And so it was really difficult for me to maneuver that probe around this root. As I got closer to her, I realized that there's about two or three other rattlesnakes just behind her. And now I'm caught up on that root again. See, right there. You can definitely see that there's another rattlesnake behind her, but look at how curious she is. She has no idea what to make of this intruder in her den. So I finally got the camera straight and look at those heat pits. You can see right down to the membrane in those heat pits. And now I'm hung up on that root again. But look at that, she comes right up. She's tasting it, trying to figure out what exactly it is. She's not sure if she should be alarmed by it or not, but she definitely knows something is not normal about what's happening here. So like I said, there are still maybe two or three rattlesnakes directly behind this one that aren't coming forward like this one is. So I really wonder what the social structure of these rattlesnakes are. Is this one standing its ground so the others can retreat further into the den to safety? Or is she just more curious than the others and couldn't care about what happens to the other ones? Or is this one the guard for the colony? The alpha, maybe? At this point, it's all speculation, but it's a really interesting question, and frankly, I have more questions than I have answers here watching this snake's behavior. 
And if anyone out there watching this is pursuing a degree in herpetology, well, this is a doctoral thesis waiting to happen right here. Because out of all the rattlesnakes in this den, it's only this one who I assume is a female that's coming to investigate what's happening. All the others are trying to retreat further down into the den. And you can still see in the background, there's one just hanging right in the background there. But that one is not coming forward to see what's going on. So as I try to get around this root, I mean, this is a perfect den. And I get caught up on the one root that's coming out of it. But here again, you can see right into those pits. Comment below if you've ever seen rattlesnake pits illuminated like this. Look at that, you can see right down to the membrane. And she is still so curious. But she's not doing rapid tongue flicks, which tells me she's nervous. She's only flicking out her tongue periodically just to try to get more information to try to figure out what it is that's happening here. If she was nervous, she would be having rapid tongue flicks, she would be striking at the camera, and she's not. She knows something is not normal, but she's not sure exactly what it is. But I stood there and filmed this one, just come at the camera, then retreat, over and over again, trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, you can just see her trying to problem solve this. But then, as she can't figure it out, she just retreats back down to the den. And so I reposition the camera to try to take a look at the one behind her and look at that. I've rotated this image so that we can see these giant cockroaches that were down there. But these cockroaches probably never see the light of day. And they don't seem to be bothering the snake at all. But there's a bunch of cockroaches in this den. So comment below if you know what kind of cockroaches those are. But this one has no interest in trying to figure out what this alien probe is in her den. And so as I repositioned here, got maybe a little too close to the tail, something kind of interesting happens here. Look at the way this snake is moving. One of the ways that snakes move in cramped areas is they actually use individual muscles and almost like legs, if you will. And they kind of, for lack of a better word, use those muscles to walk along the ground. And that motion is called rectilinear motion. And it's one of the four ways that snakes move. The others are serpentine, concertina, and sidewinding. But in cramped areas like this, they use their vertebrae and a layer of muscles right underneath the skin to walk across the ground. And you can see how this snake does that perfectly. So this endoscope has a temperature gauge on it. And outside, the ambient air temperature is about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside this crevice, it's 53 degrees Fahrenheit. Which means that the snakes can come out, heat themselves up, when they overheat, they can retreat inside this crevice. They can cool down, and then they're going to come right back out and heat up again. It really sucks being a cold-blooded animal that can't control its own internal temperature. You constantly have to move around to try to find that sweet temperature spot. All right, so he retreated back into the cave in there. I've never seen anything like that before. I've been up here tons of times and I've always wanted to know what's inside a rattlesnake den and yet it took me all this time to finally buy an endoscope so that I could see what's inside a rattlesnake den but we've only been up here for a couple of minutes so far this is our first timber rattlesnake the reason why I love this bluff so much is because this is relatively unknown to people to come up here and look for rattlesnakes up here. There's no towns around here. You have to drive about an hour into the wilderness to get to this place. It's not an easy place to get to, and therefore, there are tons of undisturbed rattlesnakes on this bluff. So I'm gonna pack up my gear. I'm gonna continue exploring this bluff. There is bound to be several more rattlesnakes that we're gonna find out what they're doing in the dens over there. You see all those cockroaches in there? Jeez, that was a, that was a lot of cockroaches. So I'm up here with my buddy, Ryan Dolan. Uh, been up here, what is this, our second, third time up here together? Together, yeah. Yeah, something Very like nice. that. As I was filming up here, you found another one. Yep, I did find another one hanging out, uh, kind of where you find them typically, right between where they have a good area to retreat to, but also have a little bit of an opening between these uh, sheets of rock, or probably, what, what kind of rock do you think this is, limestone? Limestone, yeah. So there's some that have some cleavage in between them, and they've been hanging out right in there where they can go out just a little bit, get some sun, and then come back in, get a little too warm, yep, cool yep. off, go back out, back and forth, back and forth. And gotcha. They, they must have a pretty good, pretty good amount of rodents that come through here because they are plentiful. They and they, they are, are well fed. They're plump. All right. So two things. One, let's go find that rattlesnake. Let's do it. Two, 
You said cleavage. I did. <laughs> God, I swear to God, we're in junior high. All right, let's go find that snake. All right, so have a look at this, guys. This guy is just sitting here chilling. Hi, sweetheart. Rattle. That is like the classic rattlesnake pose right there. Totally unalarmed that I'm just right here. That is just perfectly beautiful. Look at the segments on his rattle, too. He's got a ton of segments on his rattle. Oh, man, you are just sitting there so perfect. Usually these guys, as soon as you approach, they head right under that rock. But look at the sweetheart. She is just sitting there wondering what we're doing, what's going on, why my camera is in her face. Absolutely, unbelievably beautiful. Look at that. So curious. And now she's like, uh, I think there's a couple of predators. I'm going back in. So there's a misconception that you can tell the age of a rattlesnake by how many segments their rattle has. And that is absolutely not true. But every time she sheds, she's going to get another button right here at the base of the tail. And as she crawls around on these rocks, she's going to break off segments. But look at how big and beautiful that rattle is. I have never seen that big a rattle on a rattlesnake here in Minnesota. This is absolutely amazing. So this is a big, beautiful female, and she's not by a den. Sometimes rattlesnakes will crawl up on top of rocks to get get as much sunshine as they can and also the rocks themselves are radiating heat and it's a perfect place for rattlesnakes to go to bask and that's exactly what she's doing here so we're not going to bother her any more than we need to we just want a couple of photos and some video of her and then we're just going to leave her exactly as we found her up on top of this rock we're going to continue on and see if we can find some more rattlesnakes and dens all right we've just left that other female took two steps look at that there's another beautiful timber rattlesnake on this rock i don't even really want to bother her can we just kind of leave this one alone and keep moving on absolutely yeah let's get some photos of her and not disturb her any more than we need to but man that's the third one in about 30 minutes but look at this she is just sitting out right underneath this rock right there is the other female that we just left so we just walked right here and there's another timber right there this is why i love this bluff and this is why nobody will ever know where I am. And if I find anybody that comes up here and disturbs these rattlesnakes, Kill you. Oh, I'm going to jail. So right now as I'm filming this, it's the middle of May and it's the best time of year to come up here and see these rattlesnakes on top of these bluffs. And the reason why these rattlesnakes are on top of these bluffs is they just spent the entire winter deep in these rock crevices and these dens and that's where they hibernated. And in the springtime, like now, both males and females will come out of hibernation, they will breed, and then the females that are gravid or pregnant will stay on top of this bluff until they have their babies. They give live birth as all rattlesnakes do, but the females that aren't pregnant or gravid and the males Further on in the summer, they will leave this bluff and they will go into the river valleys where it's much, much cooler. But in the fall, all the babies and the males and the females will come right back here and hibernate right where they hibernated the year before. Okay, right down here, Ryan has found yet another one, but I'm not gonna rush over there because as you can see, there are a lot of rocks and stumps and places for these snakes to hide. And I need to work my way over to Ryan without barging through all this stuff and accidentally stepping on one. I'm more concerned about stepping on one not because he's going to bite me. But if I step on that snake, I'm going to hurt the snake and I don't want to do that. Oh, you can see him right here. His head is tucked away in back. Look at that beauty right there. And look at that rapid tongue flicks. He's a little bit nervous, but he's not buzzing yet. He's just very curious as to what's going on. We're gonna leave this beauty right in situ where he is and uh, we're gonna move on. So right behind me is another rattlesnake den. I'm gonna take the endoscope. I'm gonna stick it as far down into that den as I can and we'll see who's home in this one. At Dubia.com, all the roaches are raised in-house in sterile conditions and then packed and shipped on site directly to you. For all your Dubia needs, order today at Dubia.com or see the link in the description below. So no sooner did I stick my probe in this den than boom, there's a rattlesnake right there. I'm about maybe two, two and a half feet in right now. And what I didn't notice is I just got a glimpse of a back door there. And with me disturbing this end of the den, that rattlesnake looks like she is heading directly for the back door to make her escape out of this den. And like the last one we saw, this one is using, again, that rectilinear motion to move across the ground. And this den is much more vast and open than the previous den. And so far, I've only seen one rattlesnake in this den, and there's a funky little ant. 
But then as I tried to adjust the camera, I completely lost the snake. And Ryan was on the other side, so if that snake used the back door to this den, Ryan would have seen him come out, and he didn't. Which means that there's probably another chamber in this den. But then as I tried to find the snake, look at this. This is maybe the funkiest spider I've ever seen, and it was on a web. This is about four feet down, and I'm pretty sure that this spider is some sort of cave-dwelling spider here in Minnesota. I have no clue what it is. It looks like on its abdomen there, it looks like it has a skull pattern. If you recognize what this spider is, please comment below because I'm really curious to know what this spider is. So I went on deeper to try to find that rattlesnake and just as I did, wait for it, right there. A snake, like a strip of greased lightning goes right in front of the camera that I didn't even know was there. And so I tried to adjust to identify that snake. I knew right away it wasn't a rattlesnake. And look at that right there at the bottom of the screen. That's an Eastern milk snake that was down there. And I'm trying to adjust the probe to get a better look at it and I got a pretty good shot of its tail as it crawled away. But I have never seen an eastern milk snake move that fast. Look at that. He just retreated into the depths and just like that, he was gone. So I've been coming up to these bluffs in southeastern Minnesota for years and I've always wondered what is actually happening inside a rattlesnake den and now that I have an endoscope we can see that these snakes are naturally docile when they don't feel threatened and it's a behavior that is very rarely seen unless you're sticking an endoscope in their dens and seeing rattlesnakes how they naturally are. So guys, I am far from finished with this endoscope. In a couple of days from now and in a video coming up, I'm gonna go up to the prairies of Minnesota. I'm gonna stick that endoscope in some mammal burrows and we're gonna see what bull snakes and western hog noses are doing underground in those mammal burrows. So comment below and let me know what other snake dens you would like to see me explore with this endoscope. And guys, as always, thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.